In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing exactly how much I made my first 30 days selling a print on demand. I've always been super interested in these types of videos, everything from how much people made in their first YouTube paycheck to how much business gurus are making on a monthly basis. But it seems like in the print on demand sphere, there are not a ton of people sharing exactly how much they made that very first month when they started this business completely from scratch. Now, before I started print on demand, I had no e-commerce experience whatsoever. This was all new to me. So I honestly honestly did not know what to expect whatsoever. Yes, I consumed tons of content online about how people did this, how much they were making in their own businesses, but I really didn't know what to expect as a new seller. I honestly wouldn't have been surprised if I had only made like $5 in my first month, which spoiler alert, that's not how much I made. I really did not know what to expect. So I'm hoping that by revealing some of these numbers, I will be able to give you some clarity on what is actually realistic for you to achieve in your first month on print on demand. Now, I'm gonna give you some context for what my print on demand journey actually looked like from the beginning. So like a lot of other people in 2020, I was looking for another thing that I could do from home to make maybe some extra income or just to take up some of that time that we all had a lot of at home. Now, when I first started, there were really three platforms that I was interested in selling on. These are the ones that I heard people talking about the most and that seemed like they were doing really well for people. Now, the first one was Amazon Merch, which I still talk about all the time. It's definitely my favorite platform to sell on. And then Redbubble, which I still sell on Redbubble. It definitely has had some ups and downs over the past few months, but it definitely has been a solid player in the print on demand game for a long time. Now, the third site that I got started selling on was actually Teespring. It now goes by Spring. Since then, I have actually removed myself from the platform. They made so many changes over the last couple of years that I think really decentivized a lot of print on demand sellers from wanting to sell on this platform. They've really tailored it a lot more to people with really existing followings that can utilize their merch production template. But Teespring still was a really great introduction to what the world of print on demand was. And it did work for me at the time. Now, my strategy going into print on demand is very similar to what I do currently. However, when I first started, I think I was even more aggressive on getting new designs uploaded. So right away when I got started, I created an account on Teespring, I created an account on Redbubble, and then I applied to Amazon Merch. So if you're not familiar with it, on Amazon Merch, not anyone can just sign up. There is an application process. A lot of people do end up getting denied. So right away, I was only selling on two sites. I did end up getting accepted to Amazon Merch towards the very end of those 30 days, and you will see that reflected when I do share how much I made. But primarily, Primarily, my first month only was made up of sales on Teespring and Redbubble. Now, my strategy for selling print-on-demand products has not changed very much from what I went into this first month doing. I was committed to researching and finding 10 low competition, high demand niches every single day and uploading those to products on all of the platforms that I was on. So I would create 10 unique niche designs for Teespring, and then I would post those same designs on Redbubble. I wasn't making unique designs for both platforms, and I was also saving all of these designs in folders in hopes that I would get accepted to Amazon Merch, and then I would have products ready to go and upload in those 10 slots that I would get if I was accepted to Amazon Merch. Now, from the get-go, I knew there were a couple tools that I was going to have to invest in to be able to make this business work or to just make things a little bit easier for myself. While I have several more tools now, there were just two that I got started with when I first began this print on demand journey. The first one was actually Merch Informer, which I still love and use every single day. It is a complete research tool for selling on Amazon Merch, but as you'll see, it also works for selling on other sites too. Now I have a complete walkthrough tutorial here. I will link that. I still stand by it. It helps me find new niches and products every single day, but that was the first research tool that I got. The next tool that I invested in was Placeit because I loved that they had both design features, which I was going to be utilizing to make my designs, as well as a mock-up generating feature, which you will find is very, very important to how I got success early on in my print on demand business. Now with both of those tools, my initial investment for this first month was a little under $20. That was actually my first income goal 
for my print on demand business. It seems very modest now. I just wanted to make about $20 to cover the cost of those so I wouldn't be out any money. So I definitely would have been thrilled if that's what I came away with at the end of this 30 day kind of experiment that I was doing. Now on Teespring, they had kind of a validation process for each new account that was created before your products were able to be shown on the wider marketplace where you would then be able to make wider sales. And that validation process was basically you had to make 10 sales that you brought to the platform and then they would begin showing your products to a wider audience. So I knew that I didn't really want to just spam my friends and family with buying the products that I made. So I had to find a way to get new customers from strangers that I didn't know. Now that's where the strategy that I used later to be able to get out of tier 10 really fast came into play. I first did it in my first week on print on demand to make those first 10 sales on Teespring. So what I did is I created an Instagram profile for a very specific print on demand niche. And then I used Playset's mock-up features to take the designs that I made in that niche and uploaded to Teespring. And then I would create lifestyle mock-ups on real pictures of people. And I would post those every single day to that Instagram page. And I would tag it with relevant hashtags. And I would also follow relevant associated accounts. And very quickly, I found more people following me. They would visit the link to my Teespring. And I actually started generating sales that way. So very quickly in that first month, I made the first 10 sales I needed for my products to get out to the wider marketplace. Now, at the same time, I was uploading all of these same products on Redbubble. So every single day, I would start by looking on Merch Informer. I would find the niches that I wanted to target. I would create designs for them on Placeit or the free version of Canva, which I've definitely since upgraded. It's much better on the paid plan, but I was really just trying to limit what I was spending in that first month. While I was bringing my own traffic to my Teespring shop on Redbubble, I just created the listings, I uploaded them, and I really didn't do anything else after that. And what I found is that I actually started making sales on Redbubble within that first week too. It was just a couple at first, but then I had a few product kind of take off and I was making several more sales. All of that was 100% organic on Redbubble. Now, another thing that I would do is while I was creating 10 designs in 10 unique niches every single day. If I found that a product in one of those niches did sell, I would basically create 10 more products in that same niche. So I was taking products that were validated and I was really trying to hit those niches and be able to make even more sales once I knew that that was something that people were interested in. So at the end of my first month, with posting about 10 new designs a day, there were definitely some days that I did not post exactly 10. I had between 200 and 300 unique designs posted on both Teespring and on Redbubble. And I also had kind of gained quite a bit of a following on one of my social media platforms that was at the time linked to my Teespring account. I had gotten those 10 sales and I'd started to get some more organic sales that the site was actually just bringing me. And then about four days before the end of that 30 day period, I actually found out that I got accepted to Amazon Merch. I took about a week to get my application going to send it through. And then it took another few weeks for actually to get accepted. But I did receive that email on Amazon Merch. At the time, you could only upload one product every single day and you could only have 10 total products live. So each day of the rest of the month, I started to post my best best sellers both on Teespring and Redbubble. And then since that strategy had worked so well for me on Teespring to kind of funnel traffic from social media to that account, I wanted to use that to be able to get out of tier 10. So I actually just took the exact same niche that I had been working on for Teespring. I switched out the link to then go to my Amazon products, but in that same niche and then I was able to start generating sales that way. All right, so let's get into what you actually came here for. How much did I make on each of these sites in my first 30 days on print on demand? So on Teespring, in my first 30 days, I made $119.22. Now about 50% of that was from direct traffic that I had brought through social media, but about the other 50% of those sales was actually organically through the site. It started bringing me traffic right away after I had validated my shop. And now on Redbubble, this one was the most surprising to me because I did not do any marketing whatsoever. This was all 100% organic in my first 30 days. I was completely shocked by this. 
and on Redbubble, I made $113.32. Since my Amazon merch account was very new, I got it towards the end of the month, I actually only ended up making two sales in those first four days that I generated from that Instagram account, which I was still thrilled by because sometimes it takes so long for people to even make their first sale on Amazon Merch. With those two sales, I had my products priced at $14.99 at the time, which now I would definitely never go that low, but it was a strategy I was trying to use to be able to generate some more sales. So I made a profit of $2.90, which is not a ton, but I was just thrilled to make any sales at all on Amazon Merch. So in total, I made $235.44 on my first month, which I was so thrilled about this. Like I said, I had posted between 200 and 300 unique designs, even though every single design definitely did not sell and still not every single one of my products sells. It's more like about 5% of the products I ever post. But with 200 to 300 unique designs posted, I made almost a dollar per design that I had created, which I thought was just amazing for my first month. So I definitely see a lot of people getting discouraged thinking that print on demand is too saturated. And we are a few years down the road from that, but that is still not true. There is definitely money to be made in print on demand, especially if you are on even more of the sites that I recommend now. When I first got started, I had not started Etsy integrated with Printify, which now is right up there with my Amazon merch sales. So now there are even more opportunities opportunities for you to make a lot of money in print on demand. It's not too late. And I still really do stand by the method I use not only to get those first sales, but also to research and find good niches to post every single day. So if you are using a tool like Merch Informer or Sales Samurai, if you're focusing more on Etsy, you can find new niches and products. And if you're uploading five to 10 new products every single day, once you build up a catalog of more than 100 or 200 products, you definitely will find that you are making sales. Now, I wasn't making thousands of dollars in that first month, which is possible some people do post a product, it goes kind of viral, and they do make thousands of dollars in their first week or month. But I think it's more realistic to think that you could be making in the hundreds of dollars in your first month. But that profit is only going to increase every single month if you keep doing the same strategy of posting new designs in low competition niches every single day. Now, if you're thinking about getting started on print on demand, I'm going to point you to this video next, which is my complete master strategy. What I would do right now this year to actually completely start your print on demand business from scratch, or maybe you have some print on demand businesses, but they're not doing as well. So definitely take a look at that video and see what you maybe could be doing differently to really grow this print on demand business, but it's still definitely possible. There is real money to be made in print on demand and you can definitely do it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.